Good morning. Let us bow for a word of prayer. O gracious and eternal God, we give you all the praises this morning. We want to thank you for allowing us to see another day and a new year. We ask the forgiveness of our many sins. I ask also special blessings on our bereaved families and our sick and shut in and those that are viewing this morning. We also ask special blessings on our pastor and his wife. And these are the blessings we ask in your name. Amen. Our topic for this morning is God promises restoration and protection. Our devotional scripture comes from 2 Thessalonians 3, 1 through 5, 13 through 17. Our background scripture comes from Isaiah 43, 1 through 21. Our printed passage comes from Isaiah 43, 1 through 4, 10 through 12. And our key verse, the King James Version, is Isaiah 43 and 1, and it states, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. Our author, Isaiah, son of Amos, date around 740 to 700 B.C., starting in the year that King Uzziah died, written to whom? the nation of Judah. The purpose of the lesson, Isaiah reveals that salvation, both physical and spiritual, is from the Lord. The historical setting of the lesson, the prophet whose name the book bears, Isaiah, begins his ministry around 740 BC with the death of the popular king, Uzziah. Isaiah's ministry spanned four administrations, as Isaiah 1 and 1 confirms. The book of Isaiah is truly a book of prophecy. Isaiah predicted, foretold events with amazing precisions, the fall of Assyria, the defeat of Judah at the hands of the Babylonians, the restoration of God's people after the exile. Although Isaiah's prophecies were yet to come, he preached as though they had already happened or were happening at that time. Isaiah's preaching looked towards beyond the people of Judah being in exile. He predicted that God will be his chosen uh, people in their crisis and the assurance of God's presence with the, them would make what they must endure easier to bear. In God's own time, he would deliver his people out of their troubles, troubles that were in due to their own doing. The promises of deliverance would serve to keep God's people encouraged. The geographical and cultural setting of the lesson God's chosen people, the Hebrew people, were divided into the southern and northern kingdoms. The northern kingdom was Israel and the southern kingdom was Judah. Isaiah preached in the southern kingdom. It is noteworthy that the great prophet Micah preached in Judah, the southern kingdom, around the same time. Isaiah preached to, pe preached to people who were comfortable in their sins and to a government that was glorifying in their corruptions. The age of atrocity was in full swing. The rich were getting richer at the expense of the poor getting poorer. The poor were losing their lands and homes and at the hands of the rich and powerful. No doubt that Isaiah's preaching fell on deaf ears for most folks will not heed warning until it is too late. Some prominent characters in the lesson, Isaiah, God's prophet, 
His name means salvation of Jehovah, Judah, the southern kingdom of the Hebrew people, God's chosen people. Some key terms in the lesson are chosen, and it is found in verse 10, and is defined as chosen one, divinely elected and selected. Honored, it is found in verse 4 and is defined as distinguished, glorified, respected, and honorable. Redeemed, it is found in verse 1 and it is defined as acted as a kinsman, brought back, and claimed. In our introduction, the fix for feelingness. One definition for the word fix is a remedy or a cure. This lesson is titled, Fear Not, which is the same command that God gives to his people though. His prophet Isaiah in verse one of the printed passage, fear has gained a strong hold on the minds, hearts, and even the faith of many of God's people. These people spend much of their time fretting over conditions and circumstances and not nearly enough time trusting in God. The remedy for fearfulness starts with a rightly rooted faith. A rightly rooted faith is one that is grounded, firmly planted in God. Everyone has faith in someone or something. The pressing question is not, do we have faith, but in what, whom is our faith? Our faith must be placed in God because faith in God will chase away fears. Faith and fears are foes of the most combated kind and they cannot simultaneously set up camp in the same heart. In the lives of God's people, in every way, age, trials and tribulations will come. Forces and force beyond our control will cause some trials and other trials will be self-inflicted. But either way, they will come into our lives. As we live in close fellowship with God, we will be able to master whatever comes our way with the help of God. The power and console and effects of God's presence with us will strengthen us as we encounter the mountains and valleys. In our biblical background, Isaiah preached during a time when the government, society, and religious order in Judah were in moral and spiritual shambles. The leaders and the elite had become complacent in their evil ways. While the people thought that things would continue as usual, God revealed to the prophet Isaiah that the day would come when they would have to suffer for their sins. Isaiah 43 is placed in the book section described as the comfort section. In the chapter, Isaiah preached a message for God's comfort and presence with his people as they went through trying times. One of the precious truths that we can exact from Isaiah's message in this chapter is that we can endure the bad times much easier when we stay conscious of God's presence. Exposition and application of the scripture. The blessings of belonging, Isaiah 43 and 1. The Lord confirms in verse 1 that the Hebrew nation is his people. God stated this concerning the people of Judah. That indicates that the relationship between God and his people is uniquely personal. There is a significant difference between God's creation and God's children. Not everyone whom God has created is his child. To be God's child, one must have an intimate, 
spiritual connection with him. God created Jacob and formed Israel. It is a remnant of Jacob out of whom came a nation. God formed Israel in that he made a new creation, a new person, a person who has a spiritual relationship with God through personal shared fellowship. God had called his people by name and they belonged to him, should call them to break free from the clutches of fear. To belong to God is the greatest blessing and highest honor that anyone can experience. Good news about God's presence, Isaiah 43 and 2. In Isaiah 43 and 2, the NIV version, the Lord said to his people, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. In this verse, the Lord mentioned water and fire. Both elements can bring about danger and even death. Water can drown us and sweep us away when it is trouble. Fire can severely burn us at the best and kill us at the worst. The heart of this verse is a promise made by God. I will be with you. In all that we endure, we have the comfort of God's presence with us and his continuous faithfulness to us. God, the divine different maker. Isaiah 43, 3 to 4. The Lord opens verse 3 by declaring, I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, the NIV version. He states what he has done and will do on his people's behalf. God declare, I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Sabah, in your place, verse 3b. God causes the people to look back on certain instances in the history of the Hebrew people when he intervenes for them. Exodus 12, 29 through 33, 14, 8 to 30, Second Chronicles 14. What God said here was not only a review of what God had done, but also a preview of what God will do to intervene for his people. God is the ultimate difference maker. He can do what nobody else can do because he is what nobody else can be. God is the Lord our God, the Holy One of Israel, our Savior, the Lord stated, before me no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. I, even I am the Lord, and apart from me there is no Savior. Isaiah 43, 10b three eleven. that's the NIV version. There is no one equal or superior to him. Call for a sacred cause. Isaiah 43, 10 through 12. In verse 1 of Isaiah 43, the Lord made it clear that the prophet preached to a people who were divinely called. In verse 10, God declares that his people are his witnesses and chosen servants. They were servants chosen to be God's witnesses, people who would represent God in the world and make him known in the world. That is where God's people Israel and Judah fell short. Unfortunately, some Christians today feel that communicating with lost sinners, people who are not on their level, is beneath them. We all should stay humble and remember that were it not for the grace of God, we all would be lost. God did not call us to isolate, but to communicate. God called his people to be his witnesses and chose them to be his servants, that they 
may know that I am he. Before me there was no God form, neither shall there be after me. To be witnesses for God, the witnesses must know that God is the one and only true God. Those who are not convinced that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the true God will be timed and tentative in their attempt to function as his witnesses. Those who know that God is the true God and have had a genuine salvation experience will witness with whole boldness and passion. In verses 17, at verses 11 through 12, excuse me, God proves that he is the Lord who saves, not just by declaring it by literacy, saving and delivering his people. In closing, number one, when circumstances seem hopeless, God offers help and hope. Number two, when we stay focused on who God is and what God can do, we will realize that we have every reason to trust him and no reason to fear. Number three, in God we have more than insurance, we have assurance. Number four, insurance is earthly and can lapse, but assurance is spiritual and lasting. Number five, if we are saved, then we are called and kept by God, who cannot fail us and will never leave or forsake us. Number six, when we need God to carry us and not just walk with us, he does just that. And finally, God is the one and only Savior. Thank you.